Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Good afternoon and welcome to Postscript. I'm Tyler Riley, high school pastor here with Timothy Atik, executive director of Breakaway. So TA, thanks for being with us this afternoon. Absolutely. Uh, so you just wrapped up a two-part series called Tough Stuff. Today was on the topic of suicide. Yep. Um, so we do have some questions that came from that sermon. Great. I figure we could just jump right into yep. it. Awesome. Sounds great. Good. So the first question is this, uh, how do I give hope to a friend who has wrestled with depression for 30 years? Yeah, good question. I think that the the greatest encouragement that you can give to anyone is to is to be willing to make themselves known and to invite and to invite other people into what's really going on. If it's been a struggle for thirty years, you know what? That I I even mentioned in the talk that I have a personality that leans toward depression. That doesn't mean that I'm wrestling with it all the time. It just I know that that can be a potential problem and and that could be this person's case for all of their their life but I would encourage them number one if they've never talked to a doctor about it hopefully in 30 years they have if they haven't they need to talk to a good doctor just to see what's going on but the best thing they can do is <clears throat> consistently share what they're feeling with other people so um, I, I'm always a big fan fan of Christian and biblical counseling to go and and seek help from a professional, but also to have good friends who are consistently on a weekly and at times even a daily basis asking the hard questions of, hey, tell me what you've been feeling today. Let's identify some of the lies and let me be a truth teller into your life and let me speak words that will bring life and hope. So the best thing is, the hardest thing is when you're struggling with depression, you don't want to talk to anyone. But to say, I'm going to ask you questions, and when I ask them, you're going to respond, and you kind of don't have a choice. Right. Absolutely. That's good. Uh, well, the next question is this. How would you counsel a parent or loved one of a person who has committed suicide? Yeah, <clears throat> that's heartbreaking. And, you know, I think, I think what I would share with you really comes from the letter that I read during the talk today from a mom who lost her son. The, th the, the thing that's been so encouraging about my friend is that she's been willing to talk about it, that she's acknowledged the pain. And she, you even heard in the letter, she shared all of the emotions that has come with it, including anger and you know, and, and also sadness and also feelings of guilt, like it was all in there. And I think that's been therapeutic for her to be able to share that with other people. This isn't something that you need to hide or deal with it on your own. You need to let people surround you and you need to have people that you can be completely honest and share things that, like, I am angry at my loved one for taking their life. Yeah. And to not be embarrassed by that, but to say, look, this, this isn't normal for me to have to be dealing with. And so the feelings that I'm feeling, I don't even know how to process through them. So I'm going to put them on the table and, and, to, and for, to have people in your life that can say, I'm not freaked out. I'm yep. not scared by what you just shared with yep. me. Makes sense. And thanks for sharing. And let's, let's pray. Here's some words of truth from the scripture. But also to say, you know what? Don't be afraid to seek help from a... Yep professional to go to counseling and to to let someone ask you questions and and to process through it. starting with the embracing of yeah, the realness of those that's feelings. right absolutely well uh during the sermon you mentioned that uh on the topic of suicide that it is a sin but yeah. it is not an unforgivable sin it's not the unforgivable yeah. sin um and so the question comes in is this if suicide is forgivable um how would one confess and repent is it not necessary to do both in order to receive forgiveness? Well, <clears throat> this is really a question about <clears throat> how is a person saved? This is a question about salvation. And, you know, uh, Romans 10 tells us that all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know, you look at the book of John and it uses the word believe over 80 times. Um, you know, 1 John 5, 
5, you know, 11 through 13, it says, He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. I write this to those who believe in the name of the Son of God so that you may know that you have eternal life. My point in sharing that is that salvation, which justification is the big Bible word there, which means to be declared right standing before God. That is a moment in time event. It's a once and for all event where when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, God makes you new. That's why 2 Corinthians 5.17 says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. Behold, the old is gone, the new has come. At that moment, Jesus Christ deals with all of your sins, past, present, and future. So salvation isn't, doesn't hinge upon your repentance and confession of every single sin. If that's the reality, I would imagine that there are countless sins that I've missed in my life yeah. that I haven't, that I've failed to repent of or confess, even the small ones, the, the things that we would classify as small sins. Thankfully, God's grace covers over all of those sins. Is repentance a part of the, the Christian faith? Absolutely. We're called to repent. Are we called to confess? Absolutely. But we are called to do those things as those who have already been saved. We don't do those so that we will be saved. Right. Right if that skin. makes sense. Absolutely. Well, that's all the questions that we have. Yeah. Uh, again, thanks so much. It was a great series. Um, and thanks for being here. It was yeah. good to have you back. You bet. And thank you uh, for being here today. We'll see you next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.